I've been slowly transforming into a caveman. We moved, so naturally I lost my razor, my beard got out of control, and I casually gained 30 pounds of muscle. What have I become? That feels ridiculous, but I'm pretty sure you don't get fat by doing manual labor 14 hours a day for a month and a half. Holy crap. That's a baby deer. That was a jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow this all managed to relate to today's project, which is to conquer the great outdoors with technology like Nerdy Mountain Men. And of course, what Nerdy Mountain Men need most of all is an epic hiking stick. And if I just wanted a hiking stick, I'd just grab, you know, a stick. What we need is greatness. We need glory. What we're gonna make is a smart hiking stick. And this little rectangle of justice is called a unihiker, and it's gonna be the brains of our operation. So I'm not really sure what that means my role in this project is going to be, but while I work this out, I'm going to be using this to make our hiking stick smart. I'm putting together this project with visually disabled people in mind, so there will be some features that will only be useful to those users unless it's really dark outside, but even then, there's a light on the stick, so, you know, yeah. Just by virtue of being a stick, it's already inherently useful. Oh hey, imagine that. There's crap everywhere. Who knew? But legit, mobility canes are one of the main tools that blind people use to navigate, and just by being a stick, that base is already covered. You can clear brush, prod things from afar, and even get things that would otherwise be out of reach. So really, what can we even do to enhance the mighty stick? Now to introduce you to the smart hiking stick. The start of it, anyway. Walking through nature, you'll end up with hanging branches and obstacles that you wouldn't feel with a guiding cane. So, I'll have two forward-facing ultrasonic sensors. One faces up slightly, and the other faces down slightly. Each plays a tone whenever there's an object in range, and the tone will change based on how close the obstacle is. Each sensor is in a different range, so you'll be able to know where the obstacle is just by getting used to the sounds. Disable distance sensor. This can get old pretty quickly for those who don't need the feature, and for anyone testing it on the desk next to them. Enable distance sensor. For whatever reason, the fastest I could get at registering and processing voice commands was 5 seconds, but you know what? I'm just a dude in track pants, not a massive company, and it works, so I'm happy. Disable distance sensor. Which brings us to the next feature. Disabled. Naturally, since we added voice commands, we had to have a way for the stick to respond, so we have text-to-speech as well, and it sounds like the voice of an angel. Press the main button on your hiking stick when you are in your home location. Yeah. Considering that we're getting location-based weather data, we're sending our location with every alert, we're monitoring geofences for some fancy features we have coming up, it's probably pretty important to get the GPS working. So naturally, at first, the GPS was playing a super fun game called Not Working. Then I eventually found that the red light isn't just a power indicator. It's to indicate that we don't have GPS signal. So I took my setup outside in the green light of hope and the return of my sanity turned on. Green, at last. So now we at least have our core features working. And now I'm all set to go hiking. Yeah, that seems good. Which brings us to actually putting together the stick part of the smart hiking stick, and pretty much confirms that all roads lead to 3D printing. So I jumped into a VR modeling program where I got to sculpt in the air like magic, export it, and have it actually be a reasonable starting place. And to further avoid suckage, I used bits and pieces of existing 3D models and default shapes to round out the rest of the hiking stick so that it all made sense and looked nice. Things went mostly smoothly with the 3D printing, with exception. Perfect. Thank you, a million power outages. But we made do. Perfect. Just what the doctor ordered. Since I don't have a seven foot tall 3D printer, I had to print in parts and glue it together, but I tried my best to make it pretty. List voice commands. So now it's time to wire it all up and get our fancy features working. And to that end, here's a list of features provided in the laziest way possible. Set home. Where am I? Help or SOS for emergencies. As for sending alerts, I'm using Blues Wireless for this. Since I worked with Blues before, I had this guy all ready to go, but since I like working with Blues, I'm gonna set up this Note Carrier A as well. So let's speed run this setup. And for anyone not interested, here's a video of baby ducks taking a bath. This screw is what gets used to hold the note card in place, so we take that out and put our note card in. 
The black one is for Wi-Fi only, so we're going to use this green one that has onboard GPS. And hot tip, I recommend not having large fingers like me, because it makes this part more difficult than it otherwise would be. Observe. All right, and go figure, Maine goes to Maine. Wow! And GPS goes to GPS. It is labeled. Sweet. Then we plug it into the computer and boom, now we're in the quick start guide. This walks you through it, but sometimes it's nice to see the process in action. We're using the note carrier A, so I've selected that. Click connect and test it out with a card version check and then give it the greatest product name known to man. Sync so it actually gets set and set up a project that'll use it. Then add the device to the project with the magic of copy paste, sync, and boom, you're ready to roll. Nice and quick, as made evident by the fact that the ducks haven't reached maturity. Next up is making it so the user can check on the weather on the go, which we also do through Blues Wireless. What is the weather? The current weather is clear sky with a temperature of 301.16 degrees C. Okay, that is not my fault. That is not my fault. So, weather was coming in in Kelvin, which uh, made me think that I was about to melt and die. So, I changed that to Fahrenheit, and let's see what it does now. What is the weather? The current weather is clear sky with a temperature of 83.22800000000007 degrees F. Whatever. It works now. Just need to round. Rounding's easy. And with the weather data we're getting, we're monitoring every 15 minutes to see is any bad weather coming, and if so, warn the user. It was noted that those with vision impairments have trouble navigating in bad weather, which makes a lot of sense because if you're relying on other senses like sound and it's just pouring rain everywhere, that'd be a pain in the tush, so we'll give them a heads up. And also, I don't really want rain on either, so, you know. Another feature that felt pretty intuitive to include was fall detection. A fall was detected. Are you okay? Please say yes or no. Yes. Canceling fall alert. Yeah, let's go. Everything's working, so let's go ahead and charge our power bank. Which, of course, for a smart hiking stick, it's solar power. So in the model for this stick, I included an outward facing slot so it can absorb the sun's rays on the go. There we go. Yeah. This is the moment. This is for every marble in the known universe. Let's do it. Let's do the thing for marbles. If you have to drill your model, you're maybe not a good 3D modeler. Lucky for you, the model in the project is corrected, so you don't have to do this. And not really even a side note, this is why I was comfortable printing with PLA, because I'm aware of my capabilities or lack thereof with 3D modeling, and knew that there would be issues to fix. So, the good news is, I'm going to make this work, and it's fixed for you. I'm gonna get my drill, fix the model before I forget, and then we'll do our finale. <laughs> this is far from the first adjustment that I had to make for this thing, but the good news is that means version two is gonna be a lot better. Initially, the inspiration for this project was the Appalachian Trail, where you don't really wanna carry nine months of food on your back, so you have to coordinate food drop-offs. Instead of that, what if you just had a stick? They could do that for you. So to be able to use this guy to accomplish that, I'm using geofences, and whenever you walk into a certain area, these geofences are triggered and say, hey, you, bring me food. Pretty please, por favor. And then we mark that geofence is triggered, and so on. It's actually not too bad a process. We send that message via the blue setup we just did, and mark that geofence is triggered. Which seems like one of the more complicated features, but it's probably one of the least complicated features I added to the stick. And relevant to more difficult features, I realized a more likely use case for people with vision disabilities is to just be able to go on a walk by themselves safely without the need for a group or a seeing eye dog. You would be able to just take this guy and it automatically triggers the start of a walk, keeps you safe. And that part was a little bit more of a pain in the tush to put together. Here's how it works. When a user sets their home location, a geofence is put around its coordinates. When a user grabs their trusty hiking stick and leaves that geofence, a walk is automatically started. If the expected walk duration ends but the user is okay, the user can say they're fine and the walk will be extended. In another scenario, if the walk duration is exceeded and we get no response from the user, or if they say they're hurt, we send an alert. Otherwise, when the user makes it back home, the walk is automatically ended and our job is done. There is more to it than that, but I'm pretty sure in general the average attention span is dropping like a brick, so let's move on. 
At last, it's time to take the stick out for a spin. Awesome. Look at that. Sweet. I don't know that we need rainbow spasms right now, but thank you so much. Disable ultrasonic sensor. I will. Thank you. I will indeed be modifying this so that this actually fits. Promise. All right, whatever. Perfect. Let's go. All right, let's see this while I'm still somewhat audible. Send a message. What's your message? This is super cool and it works. You said this is super cool and it works. Would you like to send it? Yes. Let's take it for a journey, shall we? As goofy as the lack of cable management makes the model look, just making that hole bigger for the wires so they can actually fit, and moving this just that little bit so it can actually fit, everything else is pretty nice. Like, the grip feels good, the speaker fits nicely, it's a good height. Good. What a lovely day for a stroll. I don't remember any of my options with this glorious stick. List voice commands. Start walk. End the walk. What time is it? How far am I from home? You know, this seems like a lovely day for a walk. Start walk. Walk started. Have a good trip. Thank you so much. It seems we're approaching a heavily wooded area. Enable, what's it called? Enable distance sensor. Ultrasonic sensor enabled. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, the neighbors have to mow forever, but I can hear it. All right, we're finally coming out the other side. Disable distance sensor. Ultrasonic sensor disabled. Perfect. And wouldn't you know it, now it's suddenly nighttime. I hate when that happens. Ah, well, I guess it's time to activate the light and keep on hiking. Lights. Lights are good. We have these. I'm Marshall the Blue. How about that? Let's go. And in case you need an insane disco rave while you're hiking. And I think that wraps it up. Considering that I couldn't stop adding features to this, it turned out to be an absolutely massive undertaking. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and hopefully this serves as a good building block to help someone out in the future. Catch you on the next one. Peace, Internet.